Alright, this is the first master study that I'm going to do. I'm planning on uh, making a series of uh, famous painters to get a better idea of how they did paint back then. And uh, I probably can learn a lot from them. So that's why I'm introducing this series, which is called uh, yeah, <laughs> Painting the Masters or something. <laughs> I'm not sure yet, but uh, yeah, you will see me doing a lot more of these studies. Um, I'm starting with uh, painting by John Singer Sargent. I will just go over it, uh, study the values, study the composition. And uh, in the end, I will try to paint it myself as well to really understand this painting. And I think it's good to start looking at the values. So the first thing I'm noticing is that this is really dark. And this is really light, so there's a lot of contrast between the background and the, the focal point, which is the face. And also this shape is still really light versus the background. So yeah, I didn't notice that straight away when seeing it like this. But when I'm seeing it like this, is the first thing I see is there's a gr gradient. From here it goes darker to the background here a li little bit lighter. And here it's, it's a bit darker again. So it goes like something like this. And that there is a f figure. With high contrasts. It's not like this, but... <laughs> get the idea, probably. And even as if I zoom in, there's so much, so much difference in shapes and values. It's really interesting to see. Also, what I notice now is. The hairpin is really standing out in value. I'm not sure if I would have noticed it straight away. And also, what's, what's this? I just love how he's, he, how he's able to convey a dress with such minimal strokes. He, he really was a good master. So what if we just um, first try to get this painting into some basic shapes, basic values, to get a better understanding of what, what how this painting is constructed. Brush to pick, T 
think this one will work for now. That corner is really dark. I think it's, yeah, it's just black. Almost. It's almost black. You could see the subtle difference with pure black and just a little bit lighter. Also, what I'm noticing now is that this side is a lot darker than this side. Sometimes your brain is like, okay, um, this value is over here and over there is the same. But yeah, this is also training to notice the difference between sides. And I could check if I'm doing it right. Like this is on this side it looks really dark, but when you compare it to the painting it's not that dark actually. Let me just clean up this a little bit. Probably here is also too light. And of course, here's a lot of variety in, in, in values. But you could say that the, the value is something like that, and then it changes to more dark color. Or value, actually. Piano is a little bit darker. Again, it's it's really easy to miss the value because here I thought it was around this value, but that would have caused no contrast between the figure. So that's a lesson for me right now. That okay, um, the background can be a lot darker than you initially think. can see that the light extends a little bit more down to accentuate the piano. 
This is called piano. It looks like a really old piano. And also zooming out uh, will help to identify the values. So right now I can see that this is still too light. Way too light actually. And also flipping the canvas is really helpful to check for mistake. If you have trouble setting it up to just a shortcut for flipping the canvas, you can search on YouTube. There's an explanation, really short explanation on how to do it. I have set it to F5 because yeah, I did not use that button. So I feel right now that I have sort of the background values into place. I think they are quite accurate. And also squinting your eyes really helps with this. Just squinting your eyes and seeing the, the basic shapes and values. Oh, I, I think I will just start uh, carving out the woman. I think it's better to use this brush. When using this brush, I have a little bit more control over uh, what values I really want. When I would use this one, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to get a slightly darker value. And just, yeah, it's not really transparent. What, it, what do you call it? Flow maybe. This will allow me to yeah, carve it out much better. So her face is around here. Notice that her ear is uh, slightly darker. Then the rest, I think, I could check. So that's something to notice. And also her neck, of course, is slightly darker. Her hair is actually uh, pure black, some parts. So that's used to, yeah, still have contrast against an already really dark background. So you can see the, the background is already really dark, but when you go black, 
you should be able to still get some contrast. It's almost framing her face. Also this part of the violin. And then her chest is really bright. Still even brighter than the color of the value that I picked. And with values, it's really easy to just go, uh, yeah, three values or something. When actually the reference is more like this. A lot, a lot, the value range is a lot wider. So instead of going to this, to this, you can still go to black and have almost white. Even her chest is almost white, and then it gets some contrast by pure white on a dress. You can also see it when the color is there. That's pure white. Oh shit, I forgot to... <laughs> forgot to control C to get this out of the way. I can use the mixer brush to clean it up again. Well, then it's again quite dark. Should probably speed this up a bit. Also, this is this is really nice. This part. Because when when I would add um such a value next to her arm it would get totally lost in the background so probably what sergeant did was accentuate this edge with light so that would cause the form to pop out a lot more so imagine this or that yeah that's that's just perfect and this one Okay, speed it up, guys. You can do it. And also in this process, I think it's good to not not think too much about it. Just okay, what do you see? Go. So this is around this value, even darker. with some highlights and 
also notice that her hand is uh, lighter than the forearm. And even in the end, there's a lot of change because the right side is darker than the left side. With some highlights. <laughs> it almost looks like she, she's giving me the finger. <laughs> And something that I noticed here is um, he extended the dark darkness of the background to this part so he could use a uh, lighter value to accentuate the, I don't know what it's called, the top part of the violin. Because when this would have been, for example, the same value over here, the, con the contrast would not have been that that great but now you can really see it it, it pops out and even with color it's re it's really visible this was a conscious decision probably And also beneath the piano, it's it's almost pure black violin. <laughs> it's not a piano on the shoulder. What I'm noticing right now when I flip the canvas is that. Uh, this this shape I made it quite a bit larger so I'm not only practicing value but I'm also uh, practicing uh, proportion and shapes And again, her, the background here is darker to accentuate this. And also, I this is probably the same as this. Yeah. So the background has to be even darker. To still have contrast and also same here light a little bit lighter value on the edge to create more, yeah more visible edge
I'm adjusting this layer because uh, my sketch is already uh, had some color in it. You can see it right now. It should be like this. So this layer adjusts both layers beneath. Oh, it's picking that one, chipping that one. Okay, so the side of her dress is quite dark. It blends something like this. Also, what I'm doing uh, in this process is really thinking about uh, what this shape would have looked like like without the lightest color so right now it, it, it looks totally off but then I can I can just uh, start adding the lighter color and then it would make sense I could twitch it up with some other brushes to make it more interesting what you do? This one. Also, how we did this, it's so nice. I think we could, could get some brushes to work like this. Just to go. And then you have it. Change it up to this one. No, it doesn't work. That one maybe probably a little bit too hard. But it would force me to uh, really pick the right value. So that's actually a good thing. Darker. And also notice that this is not the same value as this. And on top it should be lighter. Same applies here. Top lighter, bottom darker. And also here is the part which is darker, which also accentuates the dress more. And it's a little bit too dark. Something like that. On this side I have to go darker again. Otherwise there won't be a contrast. I'm trying to figure out why he, uh, why this side is lighter than that side. I 
Okay, I'll never know. Probably has to do with yeah, the contrast of this versus that. I think it wouldn't have mattered if he chose to do around the same. Or maybe it does. Yeah, I'm going too deep right now. Painting hands is still something that I need to practice. Every time I draw a portrait, I think I should draw hands more. But I think... I feel like this is a good start. Just practicing... Uh, paintings. And then I will be forced to draw hands eventually. This was a really nice part. <laughs> Both the arm and the piano on the backgrounds are, yeah, quite the same value. So like that. And he made the edge quite visible. And also notice on this part is really dark. Oh yeah, I got the adjustment layer. This is really dark. And then again, from this to this, it seems to blend more into the background. And I think also this was a conscious decision. So softer edge, really hard edge. So let's see what happens if you just see it, it just goes straight into the background, but this small edge makes it pop out. Such, such a big difference. So again, you can see it really clearly here. This is almost like a glow on a piano and this this hard edge makes it so so much more interesting. And even even those those lines here. And this is what makes it so valuable to do, do a study like this because this part I would never have noticed. And now that I see it I can use it in my own work and think, okay. Uh, it should be lighter, a lighter uh, color versus a lighter color. Okay, I'll try to explain. Light, and this is also light. So if I remove <coughs> the color, it's uh, quite close to each other. And even when this arm is getting to the edge, Yeah, it also depends where I pick it right now, but yeah, it, it, this and this is quite, yeah, it's too close to notice the difference, even when I pick it right here. So we had to work around that.
and then he edits so basically it's like this and this <coughs> edge he made it like that even darker now it really pops but when you would have seen it like this it's yeah it's not not as strong as, as with the line okay so long story short nice detail i will move on And also what I thought was interesting when I turned off the adjustment layer that this is such a bright area. But when you turn it off it's yeah, it's not that interesting. This part is way lighter. But still he was able to get a good contrast here. And it doesn't <coughs> doesn't appear as yeah, big of a contrast when you turn on the adjustment layer. Maybe this is also has something to do with the color, because uh, yellow is always really um, people pay attention to yellow. You don't need a lot of yellow in your uh, painting because that was um, how do I say it? That would be too much. It would be too much in your face. So again, background color is darker over there. So this would stand out more. I'm already coming to the conclusion that I have to, if I have to paint this thing in color again, then, then we will be here for a while. So I'm still considering just going over with color on this, this value painting that I'm doing right now. just got a little bit sidetracked by this uh, edge so I will try to continue and also I'm not, I'm not sure why he made so much detail in this corner But I don't know, it works. It might be a little bit distracting. But we could check. What if I just remove this? Hmm. Yeah, it makes the piece look a little bit boring. In this way, it's more interesting, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Also, this was a conscious decision, I'm sure. They probably thought that this, this was too boring. And this, the balance is better. Okay. He is so good at values again. This part is lighter and it's fades too dark. And notice that the 
I'm not, I don't, I don't know what's called the stick from the violin. It's uh, doing the exact opposite. So it's getting lighter. Yeah, it's not exactly doing as I as I painting right now, but it flips. So the, the there will always be a contrast because when you say okay, let's do like this, it eventually starts disappearing in the darker background. So you can see it on here, he added a smaller, small highlight to make it lighter on the top. And also the top part is uh, a little bit lighter and again he uses an edge, darker edge too make it stand out and what makes it even better is uh, the string so this does not need any more explanations with value you can see clearly what it is of course I have made it not straight or what it's supposed to be a little bit bent but something like that And remember that I'm not uh, trying to copy his work. I'm just studying. Isn't that dark? No. It's actually insane how much difference there is in shapes and color and value. I probably used some kind of wallpaper with uh, yeah, animals or something or it was a large painting. And he just simplified it as much as he could. So that you can, yeah, just get those basic shapes. And it's incredible that he was able to get the, the gradient with just uh, placing s small shapes and brush strokes. Way too light, okay. What I'm doing right now is uh, I started with uh, the basic shapes, but this was really dark. And yeah, in the background, then went on the piano, and now I've laid in the basic shapes of the of the human figure. And now I'm actually fine tuning it with uh, the smaller details. I 
I can do it zoomed out like this as well. I would encourage encourage you to always uh, zoom out sometimes, not always, to make sure that uh, yeah you can see the values a lot better and also the proportions. I can see that I went a little bit off here and here also. Typically when you zoom out the, the angles are a lot more obvious. So around here, this angle was not the same as this angle. So that way I could adjust it. Maybe I could start using this brush again. Yeah, the details all, uh, almost get to too small for me to use a larger brush so at some point i will start uh, going to the smaller sketching brushes i mainly use this one so that's what i'm going to do right now We paint this, this dress is just it, it's incredible because when you will zoom in like this yeah it's just some scribbly lines and uh, brush strokes especially this part Ooh. but when you zoom out it's, it's just perfect and even even this on her sleeve is this called sleeve shoulder part. I think I can still use this brush actually. And also I think he was really mindful about his brushwork. Really think, thinking it through and then just just placing the mark. So he probably knew like this is okay this, this, around that value and then go a little bit lighter. And that's also why this is good practice, because I just pick this color and then go like, oh, whoa, that's way too light. And then I can adjust and see, okay, yeah, that's, that's better. And then I remember, okay, it was around this value. So, yeah, for me, it's a lot better. 
will make it easier to remember it in that way. Just practice and again. Now I can see that this is quite dark so I should go already quite dark and yeah then it's you still have contrast. And I think he did it he did it perfectly. And again just a dark line here creates so much more depth. Darker here, just lighter. Yeah, at some point it will just start to become more copying than studying. So I think I'm starting to get to a point where I can start any color and study the color for a while. And maybe I could also check the composition. So even just doing this uh, short exercise, I, I learned a lot already. I can see why he uh, added this gradient. And yeah, it makes so much, so much sense that he added uh, darker here. So her neck would pop up more than what I talked about this line, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just an incredible I would say symphony of values <laughs> maybe I could add some strokes to make it look more interesting maybe i could use the mixer brush And I'm not focusing on copying. Yeah. Trying to add some interest. And something that I notice right now is that um, usually a top surface of a product is not darker than the side surface. But it intentionally, probably intentionally, just this to create more contrast with the background. And of course I should add some details on the legs of the of the piano. It's actually really hard to speak a full sentence when you're just concentrated on studying something. So I will just play some medium, medium dark value, some darker. And some highlights because I think that's yeah basically enough 
to convey um, some depth and interest. And of course this is not as accurate as this, even though this is also just some shapes. But yeah, I try to follow more of the, the shapes. And when I squint my eyes, I can see that uh, this area should be a lot, of, no, not a lot, but should be a little bit lighter. I didn't think that this would be this interesting, but I'm really learning a lot, and I hope you do too. I forgot to add the thingy of the violin. And also you can use uh, small highlights to your advantages, advantage. Oh, and of course, the things in her hair. And also notice that when I'm not placing it there, the, this hair will just vanish into the background. But when you add something like this, the brain knows, okay, there should be hair. It cannot float above her head. And even this sm small line he placed on the top, Something like that. <laughs> okay, I'm actually quite happy with this right now. This is uh, still a little bit too light. Okay. And even the colors he added, it's, it brings so much more life to the whole painting. And even, even his values are so interesting to watch and study but this is just just amazing okay what i'm going to do right now is just um delete this layer adjustment layer and i can uh, study a bit of the composition and then i will start uh, adding some color to the values value sketch I did so what I find interesting is that he used uh, this shape versus uh, the figure of the shape and then of course the line of the the bow is also used as compositional yeah, uh, subject So that's the first thing I noticed is uh, if it was just a figure like this without a piano, it would have looked a lot different. But now it adds, adds a little bit more dimension. So you have uh, the background, which is the wall, or at least I think it's a wall, then a piano and then the figure. Actually, I could check what it would have looked like.
Yeah, that would not have been as interesting as uh, with the piano. So this probably uh, tells that uh, even before he started painting, he was really thinking about, okay, what, what do I want in my picture? And even he could, he could have said, um, just plays a piano like this, but that, that's not interesting. So he, he said, okay, it should be like this, and this corner should be in the frame. He also could have said um, the piano was over here, that it would fall out of the frame, but it, that also would not have made sense. So yes, conscious decisions, like, like, maybe even sketch this. Like, okay, I should have a woman right here, holding up her violin. That could have been the sketch. <laughs> Probably a little bit better than that. But uh, you get the idea. And also I'm not sure if he, when he would have decided to uh, make a look to the left, if it would have made a difference. Maybe that's something in, in art that people look a certain way, I'm not sure of that. Maybe I should uh, check it. So composition I think we're, yeah it's quite clear. It's also a triangle composition, so uh, that's what you see a lot in portraiture and in uh, figure paintings, that it goes up. So maybe that's also why you want to have the piano there, so it becomes more of a tri triangle shape. So that, that, that makes sense. Oh, I should merge this. I'm not using this a lot actually. So let me just check what's. I think it's overlay. Yeah. Okay. So first thing I notice is that her face is uh, quite warm. There's a lot of lot of reds and pinks. Even her chin is really red, and the nose, everything. And her ear is more orange. This is re really warm, and over here this. There's not a lot, a lot of color, and uh, look at her forearm. It's it's purple. You would never have guessed that this is an arm. And then this arm is, yeah, again no color, same as this. Of course, it has color, but not as bright and saturated as, for example, the dress or the golden piano. Actually, this is really desaturated, her skin. So 
This is not what I want. doesn't look as saturated I thought it would be over here something like that but it's it's almost like that this is more red Tone on and rest. Okay, so it shifts from um, more blue, purple to more red, and then eventually, even the, the the tops of her fingers are more more orange. It's, it's even this is not such a saturated value of a such a saturated color I thought it, thought it would be over here but it's actually here and that's also because the contrast of just a really desaturated color then you have to shift just a little bit and this would this looks so saturated but of course if of course it's, it's not that saturated but when i place this and then this then this saturated color that looks really saturated here does look really dull over here so color is not uh, it does not stand on its own what you place next to it makes it look uh, totally different Now I will try to study the dress in the same way as, as I did the arm. Uh, actually this is around the same, same saturation as, as this part. Now I'm trying to focus on this sleeve thing. I think uh, if we go here, yeah, actually the, the value is already off, so this should be a lot darker. Of course, if you paint a painting by yourself, you will. Uh, you, you could start with colors uh, instead of just value and then placing color over the existing painting but um, right now I'm just practicing and trying to understand what he what he has done to make his painting look this interesting so al already I can see okay he shifted from uh, a more purple from the dress more blue, purple, to more red on the top. So you can even see it. So this this is almost purple, even her lower arm. And when it goes up, it changes to a lot warmer, orange, red. So 
So I think I can just use uh, And also, this is a great way to see if you uh, to check if your values were right. So what he did on the here yeah, it's a little bit warmer, but he probably went something like no, this is way too saturated. See yeah, again, more more purple, so a little bit of warmth in the shadow but then the arm is again really really cold or maybe some more warm colors in the hands i think he did that see it's getting more warm but the the arm was more cold I will try to match the uh, the gold. I want to try to pick it myself and then check if it's the color that I wanted. Or at least, yeah, the color and the right amount of saturation. So you can already see that this is this is. Uh, to green almost and also my values were totally off but this is really saturated or at least uh, when you look at the rest of the painting this is this is quite saturated and even even this piano itself you can see how saturated it is this probably won't be as saturated no and also i'm noticing this red line that's of course you didn't see that in the in the value sketch and also i noticed that this is completely off this is straight line this totally isn't so again i'm practicing uh, value i'm practicing proportions sketching all at once and uh, just trying to understand this painting and i think even this dress is all around the same saturation so what i'm looking at is how far does the color go from uh, totally desaturated to completely saturated and it's all, all around this area so basically up and down we already did in the value uh, study and now i'm just adding color and it's all around this this saturation so even if i pick a darker uh, it doesn't matter because it only uh, transfers the color so this we already did and this is what i'm trying to do and study right now so because I already figured out what this skin word was, I can see what this uh, what color the skin is on a chest. And because it's already turning towards the more warmer side of the painting, I think it should be around here somewhere. Even more desaturated. And also it transfers in her neck, of course. Uh, 
feel like this is a little bit warm here. And then it already goes to more of a blue, purple. And also the, the shadow here is more, more warm. This is really interesting because first we learned he uses a lot of contrast in values. So a uh, dark versus a lighter, uh, lighter shape value. But he also uses a lot of contrast in uh, his colors. And that's something that I would not have noticed by just looking at the painting. It really makes sense when you're studying it. And also when you look at the face, there's so much contrast. This um, what was the yellow, more reddish, uh, really saturated red versus a lot duller desaturated red. Although this is still really saturated in this painting. More blue, blue, purple. So it all sh shifts between color uh, hue. And of course the background is all those different colors. I can try to match it and see. So desaturated. And the blue is probably a little bit more saturated. Yeah, a lot more saturated. I'm just checking what what saturation and color I'm seeing on the on top right. And something that I'm noticing right now is that on the right path, where it's a little bit darker, the saturation also turns a little bit desaturated so the left part is a little bit more saturated because probably there's more light so there will be more saturation I'm not just mind mindlessly copying the color, but I'm constantly checking. Okay, uh, I picked this color and it's around there, so, so it's at some point I can start uh, doing it myself and see what is what happens. So this is already way too saturated, and also notice that this value is still a lot darker than over here. And her dress is maybe a little more saturated. In these parts. So yeah, I think um, I learned a lot from this. Um, I'm not, not sure what I could do more to... Uh, yeah, get more knowledge out of this painting, I could start copying it. Maybe I will do it at some point and really start looking at the brushwork and see what did he do uh, to make it look like this. But I also think it's just a lot of experience to, to know exactly how to simplify all those shapes and brushes and know exactly, okay, if I do it in this direction, it looks good and and you can also see frames in the, the subject, of course. Also, always uh, following the, yeah, the basic form. So if the dress goes like this, he, obviously he would not make the brushwork like this. And this also 
following shapes, following shapes, following shapes. So it makes a lot of sense. So I hope you uh, got something out of this as well. I think it's, uh, it was quite successful. I did not <laughs> expect to learn this much from uh, studying a painting. I've never done it this, this way, but I think it's uh, really helpful. If you have some painters or specific paintings you would like me to study, please leave a comment and uh, I will create a lot more on this channel. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the next one.